Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. And welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It is Monday, the 23rd of May, 2022, and you are on the clock with Erin Green. On the clock, we engage organizations, institutions, social and cultural leaders, and ordinary people to better understand the impact of public policy, private sector development, and emerging social and consumer trends. On the clock, we have conversations that help us understand and navigate a rapidly changing Bahamas. Well, good yawning this morning. It's a Monday. That means you're uh, tuned in for a, another episode of The Bahamas, where we talk about all the interesting, fascinating, and wacky, quirky things that have happened over the last week. Uh, joining me in studio this morning is going to be Miss Philippa Dean from the Dignified Girl Project to talk about an upcoming event, My Period, My Pride. Uh, producer, is she in? No? Oh, as soon as she gets in, we are going to transition to that conversation. Uh, but there's lots to talk about in the news today. I want you all to bear with me. I had a slight accident. I uh, was meditating this weekend. I look so far into the future. I miss uh, and injure my eye. I was just well, well into the future. Poke myself in my own eye, worrying about things that I cannot control. And I fear a lot of us are doing that as well. So things to talk about this week. Uh, I had had a whole list, and then this morning's news uh, raised so many more issues. So let's start right here. New Teachers Union? New Teachers Union. Minister of Labor Keith Bell uh, announced uh, or introduced the, announced the formation of a new union, the Bahamas Educators, Counselors, and Allied Workers Union. Um, I have a lot of questions because I haven't had enough time to do any research. Um, I know that the BU, the BUT only represents uh, public school teachers. Is that so? And not private school teachers? Is this, you know, I want to know why exactly was this new union created? Uh, in the article I read this morning, it indicated that um, the members of this new union are not uh, satisfied with their representation at the moment. I will, I will say this, though. Those words weren't quoted. That's what, that wasn't a quote from members of the new union. That was a quote from the minister. And I asked myself, to what extent is this new union a new and savvy attempt at union busting? It's got a lot of union busting going on around here, even though it don't, they, you know, it doesn't wear that uniform. Don't have that, you know, badge. When you look at it, don't have that badge on it. But that's that's what it is. Not that I'm not saying that's what this is, but a lot of that is happening around the place. And I'd really like to know. What is the purpose for this new union? What drove it? 
What are its main concerns? Is it an attempt to also encapsulate uh, private school teachers? Right? Is that a is that a part of it? Uh, in in into a a unionized space. Are we concerned about conditions? Do you think that I mean is the formation of a new union not really about dissatisfaction with the work of the old union, but realizing that there are just so many tasks to take on? Is it that the existing leadership structure doesn't allow for focus on, you know, more than one or two issues at a time? I'd be very interested to know. At the same time, I want to know who is going to form a union for the students. Who is going to ensure that the rights of the student is protected. And I can tell you why. There's an article in today's paper. In today's Guardian, the article is entitled, Mother Supports Brother Convicted of Indecent Assault on Her Child. I think what I found interesting All about right. this is the victim who lived, I'm reading directly from the article. All the, right. Quote, the victim who lived with her grandmother and uncle on a family island wrote a letter to her school's principal and told him about the inappropriate touch that allegedly took place in August 2020. We see how important this space is for students and for teachers, of course. Of course. Of course, teachers need to unionize. When you see, though, the role that the school can play in protecting students, the role that it can play in the environment. We also need a student union. My guest is in the Zoom room, so we are going to get right to it. Good morning, Ms. Philippa Dean. Good morning, Erin. How are you? I am good, thank you. How are you? I am doing well, thanks. I was listening so attentively to your, your comments just a while ago because you know I am... Um, I have a background of 12 years in the educational system, yes. so it was interesting to, to hear that. I have not read the newspaper, I've not heard the news yet, but I'm going to be following. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's something that everybody should follow because if you are a parent, you got to be concerned about the teachers because the teachers require that support. But you have to be concerned about them because they are the first responders for your children. They, yes. your, your children spend the most time with them and not with you every day. Mm -hmm. It's so important that they are, teachers are, quote unquote, taken care of, right? They have the source, resources and the support that they need. But let's get into another very, very uh, important event and issue. Uh, there's an upcoming event, My Period, My Pride. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dr. Anselino Davis was jo joined us all last week, and he made sure to keep this topic prominent in our discussions. So I have to have you on to talk about it and, and make, make people aware of the resources that are available for them in the country. Mm -hmm. Aaron, thank you so much for having us again. And I also um, thank Dr. Davis because he's been an avid supporter of our cause over the years. So um, this, this Saturday, the Dignified Girl Project nonprofit organization will be hosting its fourth annual My Period, My Pride seminar. And um, we've been raising awareness of the cause for the last four years, Erin. And it has always been essential. It's always been vital but the conversation has not been held in the spaces um, that we feel it should be held. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, I believe, is, or we believe, is still rooted um, in the stigma, right, mm -hmm. that is attached and the taboo that is attached to the topic itself. So when you announce the name of the seminar, My Period, My Pride, so comfortably and confidently, 
Trust me, that did something to me. I love to hear people have that level of confidence in such a topic that has been um, avoided. Yes. In open spaces and public spaces for decades, not even years, for decades. Yes. It's... um. It's amazing that something that is so normal, so like prevalent, not prevalence, not the right, it's just so normal. It's just an everyday thing for over 50% of the world's population that we would all have so much uh, uh, shame and, and, mm-hmm. and so much stigma about it. Gosh. And so it is always, um, I'm always grateful to see men sort of step up and show that there's nothing to be ashamed of for mm-hmm. women or for men. And uh, mm-hmm. the way to break that stigma is for men to also show that they don't think there's anything to be ashamed of. So I say I want to salute all the men who play that role in their daughters and their wives and sisters mm-hmm. and significant others' lives. Uh, mm-hmm. If you need it, I could get it for you. Not a problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Aaron, I remember the last time I was on your show and we mentioned that and uh, uh, someone texted and they were like, what? I must be out of my mind talking about men supporting women in this issue. Mm-hmm. But it is important for us to invite men to be a part of this day conversation because if we want to go there men in this country for years have been policy makers right yes and we know that when we want to affect change permanently or as permanent as it could be mm-hmm. we need to get the policy makers a part of it yes um so we've been very intentional about having men be a part of this conversation every single year for the seminar the seminar is going to be held this year on the 28th of may mm-hmm. this saturday which is International Menstrual Hygiene Day. And um, this is an issue that has been under the scope of the United Nations as well. Yes. Because it's an issue that, and when I say issue, I'm talking about period poverty. It's an issue that is global. It doesn't just happen here in the Bahamas, but every single country to some degree has been impacted by um, period poverty. Poverty, And I know that there are some areas of importance to discuss this morning, and we have a short time. Um, One of them is inflation. Mm -hmm. And how does that impact the work that we're doing? Yes. Do you want to go there? Absolutely. Listen, (laughs) I, uh, you know, I I want you to, to highlight the event. Don't feel forced to focus on my politics. But yes, let's talk about it. Mm hmm. Okay, so let me share a very brief, some of the topics. So Mm -hmm. we're going to be running from for about four hours at the Fox Hill Community Center. It's an in-person event, and it's also going to be streamed live on Facebook from our Facebook page, The Dignified Girl Project. So we're inviting persons to go and register. Um, There's a registration link that's attached to our social media platforms. It's also on the flyer that's being circulated. Mm -hmm. The registration is free thanks to our corporate sponsors and Aaron, I'm not going to call their names, but I just want to say this, this work that we are doing is very possible because of the corporate sponsorship that we've been having Mm -hmm. and inflation impacts the work that we do. Not only does it impact the women and girls or menstruators that we serve, Mm -hmm. but it's also impacting the merchants. Yes. Right. Yeah. And the consumer and the merchants are the ones that supporting us and helping us to be able to expand our reach, not just on New Providence, but on Eleuthera and Andrus, where we've recently established distribution centers. And our long term goal is to have a presence on all of our islands. Mm-hmm. But let me get back to focus. So our event this year has about seven speakers, one of whom is an 11 year old girl, where every year we choose to highlight some young girl who's in a leadership position and doing amazing things in her community. Awesome. And this year we're highlighting to Kel Miller. She's 11 years old. Some of the topics that we're going to focus on is the role of men in, in, and boys in destigmatizing mm-hmm. periods and menstruation. And that's where Dr. Davis comes in. Mm-hmm. We also have pedi- a pediatrician on board with us. That's Dr. Tamara Moore. She's going to be speaking to puberty. What is the biological changes that the body goes through when we hit puberty. And this year we saw to tie in the significance Mm -hmm. of this to a person's mental health. Yes. So we have invited Dr. She says she's not a doctor, Nadia Cash. She's a licensed clinical psychologist here in the Bahamas and she's worked with youth for years. Mm -hmm. And she's going to present to us the behavioral, the mental and the psychological um, perspective of puberty. Yep. 
That's so important, mm -hmm. as well as how does a lack thereof of some of the basic needs you have yeah. when they're not provided or you're struggling with having them provided, how does that impact your mental health? Yeah. yeah. How does that affect your self-image, your self-perception, your self-esteem? Because there is a connection. And once we stop looking at these things in isolation, I think we'll get a better appreciation of what the cause is. Yeah. And the power that's behind the cause or the empowerment that is behind the cause. And then finally, we have invited a financial instructor or educator to be a part of this year's seminar. We have invited Lakeisha Roll. She teaches financial literacy mm -hmm. to children and teens. Awesome. And again, there is a connection. Mm -hmm. When is it, Erin? When, when is it the right time for us to begin to teach our children, our teens, our boys, our girls, when to save, mm -hmm. how to budget, what investments look like. Yeah, I heard a very interesting comment from a texter calling into one of the radio shows saying, well, why would you teach people uh, financial literacy? You first need to have money to be financially literate. Mm. That was so interesting. Um, but wow. I just want to say we're more than just giving people fish. We are literally teaching people how to fish. So we also have a component that's a very, and I think this is one of Dr. Davis's favorite portion, we also have a sustainability component added to our organization. So we don't just distribute uh, these dignity kits every month, mm -hmm. but we provide an educational component through the My Period, My Pride every year. We also provide a sustainability component because of our sustainable options to managing your menstruation. And we also teach or have a tutorial on how to create right? Sustainable yes. products to manage your period. I feel like I've been talking for quite a while. I want to hear your voice. <laughs> I'm right here, I'm right here. No, no. <laughs> Listen, this is, you know, this is just fantastic. You could be always, we, we often just think, oh, this is a woman's issue. They just go in the bathroom yeah. and talk about, you know, but this mm -hmm. is, this is, this issue is connected to everything. It's, yes. it, it's why we, why women want to ensure that people, not just women, but people who are concerned about women's issues are at the table. Because yes, yes. We, yes, you need to include in your financial literacy class for young people, uh, you need to include lessons and tips or segments about budgeting for things that you absolutely need and yes. nobody's going to provide them for you. Right. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and the young, more and more young people are facing that issue. We're to the point where we're looking at, at, at people who are still considers, considered minors and telling them, well, you better go figure out how you're going to equip yourself for school. Yes. Which is yes. mandatory to go to. You know, and so, no, man, this is this is awesome. I, I wanted to ask, uh, is there an advocacy or a lobby group? that is lobbying for the inclusion of policies that alleviate the stress on women generally, but uh, young women and girls and underprivileged or, or living in, people living in poverty or below the poverty line to uh, alleviate the pressure, economic pressure, or facilitate access to products. Okay, that's a very good question because a part of our our mission is to advocate, right? Yeah. And for those groups that you have um, previously mentioned, I can say to you that while we are trying to formulate that branch of our program, it is there, mm -hmm. but we're trying to strengthen it. We're trying to get the information, the research that we need Right. Yeah. So that when we sit to the table and we have these discussions and we present that we have all ends or as most ends covered. Um, I'd say this. There is some stuff in motion to sit with our current policymakers to get some policies, policies put in place that are in favor of all menstruators. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, throughout the Bahamas. I know last year, just without getting into politics, last year, last summer, just on the heels of hosting My Period, My Pride, there was an announcement made by the then governing party that um, value-added added tax was going to be removed 
from some of those very basic things that we've mm-hmm. been creating awareness around that women and girls, menstruators need. Mm-hmm. And soon after, that was reversed. Wow. Um, right? Yeah. With another announcement um, in the quote-unquote reduction of value-added tax, but then that 2% must have been applied somewhere else and bread basket items all across the board now have value-added tax added. So uh, that's a whole next ball game within itself. But those are the kind of things that we envision and want to advocate for, yes. Aaron, that value-added tax be removed from this and possibly having um, menstrual products reclassified Right. And have mm-hmm. them placed into a medical category or a um, sorry, bread basket item, item category. Yeah. Right. With, Where no, they just, will be more accessible uh-huh. because accessibility is one of the things that we are promoting. When I sit and I think of it in a practical sense and I think of the cost, just of, for an example of a pack of pads. Because, you know, the prices can range in the store. It depends mm-hmm. on brand and quantity and all those things. And uh, 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 capacity. Current, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you look at the current bread basket item list and you see bread and you see mayonnaise and you see tuna and milk, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, if I go into and buy a pack of pads, for example, for $8, uh, and I have to decide between that and feeding my household, I can actually get a loaf of bread, a, jar, a small jar of mayonnaise, and a tuna for the price of one pack of pads. So what do you think I'm, I, I am more likely to choose? Yep. You, you buying food, you feed you and eat. Okay. Yep. And so, so then that forces me mm-hmm. to possibly use alternative means, not unconventional means. In some cases, that not may not be very hygienic. Yes, absolutely. And if you continue that use, then that leads to health problems. Absolutely. It, it becomes right? a public so health issue. It becomes a public health issue. Yep. In fact, I wanted right. to... Mm-hmm. You know, on. So on that note... There's, there's so many things that, that we haven't even acknowledged need to be a part of the discussion. Uh, do we have a period safe or hygienic disposal products, services, or mechanisms for people who are using outdoor toilets, who are forced to use outdoor door toilets because they live below the poverty line? And, and the first thing people are going to say is that they don't have to use outdoor toilets. But if you are a minor, if you live with your parents, you have to use whatever is where you live. And you exactly. have no control over that. The second oh, thing is, do mm-hmm. we think about the extent to which young women are being groomed and the groomers, the perverts, the, the, you know, the rapists in waiting, that they are using this issue? That I see you poor. I see your parents can't afford to take care of you in the way that you should be taken care of. I see mm-hmm. they can't give you the basic needs, uh, mm-hmm. but I could do that for you. Do, do we understand the extent to which this issue fuels uh, early sexual uh, initiation and uh, bolsters or supports the work of the groomer, the pervert groomer? Mm-hmm. That's praying. Yeah. So I, I I am happy that you highlight that because there is all there is a connection. Even when we um domestic violence, which we've been hearing a lot in the media these past months or years, right? Mm-hmm. Um, these past months especially, that's also a part of it, right? Because one way that the um abuser mm-hmm. controls the abusee or the victim is through finances. Mm-hmm. I don't give you or I don't allow you to work or every time you try to work, I show up on your job and I cause a scene and then you're fired and then it becomes a pattern mm-hmm. and then you are then dependent on this person to provide your every day, your every month, your basic, very basic needs. So yes, an unaddressed situation like this in Um, low-income homes and families and communities Mm -hmm. could be um, a breathing ground for perpetrators and praise to continue to groom and just victimize young women. Absolutely. So, um, listen, I got a couple of texts here. Um, 
That first one is about the general news. I have another text here. It's a bit, um, it's a heavy one. It says, Aaron, do you guys think you should be having this conversation on the radio? This convo is highly disgusting and unprofessional. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I yeah. think that that highlights some of the stigma that uh, yes. people are, you know, women and, and, and women and men who have no problem publicly supporting this issue, right? Um, right. First of all, it is something that happens to over 50% of your population yeah. as a given. Mm -hmm. What's unprofessional is that a woman may not be able to come to work because she cannot afford the basic products necessary uh, you know, to, to, for, that, to manage. for her mm -hmm. menses. What, what is unprofessional right, is that some lower class working women would lose a job because they are unable to be on their, me on their cycle at work because there are no working bathrooms. That's what's mm -hmm. unprofessional. What's unprofessional yeah. is that the entire banking industry, it seems, has colluded with the government to avoid their legal obligation to have a public bathroom in a business that services the public. So women who are on their cycle have a difficult time going to banks that now require you to be available on their line for up to two and a half to three um, hours. hours. Mm -hmm. How do those women go about their professional life if the most basic amenities and services are not available to them? So I want to say, you know, I'd like to thank you for raising that text. I just want you to shift your perspective about what is highly disgusting exactly. and unprofessional. And that's what it is. Perspective and attitudes that need to be re-examined. Yes. Because it's those types of things or statements and comments that causes women just to suffer in silence. Those that that phrase mm -hmm. without finding, you know, black for a better one right now. There are so many women that suffer in silence, whether it's abuse, whether it's not having some of their basic hygiene needs met simply because of the way others are going to ridicule them, criticize them, perceive them, or demean them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, so let's get it back into the uh, event. Give the people the details. And more, most importantly, who can and who should attend? Okay. So again, the event is going to be held this Saturday, May 28th at 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at the Fox Hill Community Center. Mm -hmm. We are inviting anyone that has a menstruation to attend. Even though our target audience are girls ages 9 to 21, mm -hmm. we welcome anyone over 21. Men and boys are also invited to attend this conversation because there is a role for them to play. We want to make them aware of what that role is and invite them, right? To mm -hmm. not just spectate, but um, in destigmatization. De um, there's gonna be lots of giveaways, entertainment. We have um, many professionals trained in the area of uh, mental health as well as physical health or medical health, financial health, who are going to be a part of this conversation because as we've established, just on a surface level within the last couple of minutes, that there is a huge connection, there's a bigger picture. And I just invite people to elevate their conversations. We examine their um, as our perspectives and attitudes and adjust them accordingly, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And let's, and let's, and let's, shift a little pers let's shift a little perspective, right? I wanna mm -hmm. say to the young men uh, who feel like it's disgusting the idea that a woman should think that I should touch her garments that have been soiled, right? I want those young men to think about the women who dutifully, whether they want to or not, are prepared to wash men's soiled undergarments, right? <laughs> like, you know, there's this expectation if it's returned. And just as we go to the break, on another note, dear young men who are preparing to court young women, let me tell you how attractive and appealing it is to a woman who feels safe mm -hmm. talking about her most basic bodily function around her partner or potential partner. Look here. It, 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 it is just, with the panacea, it is, it, 
It is just the thing, gentlemen. It is the thing. Go ask your mommy. Go ask your mommy. Anyway, Philippa, uh, <laughs> you could hold on. I'm getting into the news, though. I tell you, we're going we're gonna, to... An episode, uh, this week's episode of The Bahamas is coming up after the break where we chop it up about the latest news stories. You could hold on if you want to and then reiterate the details for the event at the end of the show. But I got to go to a break right now. Okay. <laughs> to think of the bank as my personal ATM machine. If I wanted a new car, new furniture, a weekend trip to Miami, no problem. Just max out the credit card or top up my loan. I was a big baller until I realized that 75% of my salary was going to pay back all those loans. Fidelity's personal financial coaching was the best solution. Fidelity gave me a plan with a debt consolidation loan that has a built-in savings that pays 5% interest. I now only have one low monthly payment, plus money in my pocket. Give Fidelity Bank a call at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit any of Fidelity's locations or visit a website at fidelitygroup.com. Stand on Bahamas, it's your boy, saw your boy. COVID is clearly unpredictable. It doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are. I'm young, and it still put a beating on me. I had no other option but to go to the hospital. I remember the doctor telling me if I had waited one more day, I wasn't going to come inside here alive. You don't want to be in the same position that I was in. Vaccines may not stop you from getting COVID, but it can stop you from getting COVID the way I had COVID. You don't want that way. The most important thing in life is family. And whenever you need reliable advice, people you know you can trust. At J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, we earn our clients' trust every day. Whether it's home, motor, travel, or commercial insurance, we've got you covered. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S.C., 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 J.S. Johnson Insurance. A local paper in Grand Bahama is back every Tuesday as a section of the Nassau Guardian. Available at local stores, gas stations, pharmacies, Western Bakery, and Bellevue Gifts. Daily and, of course, on Tuesdays, too. Want to reach your Grand Bahama audience? Then call Barefoot Marketing at 827-4578 or message the Facebook page. Advertising opportunities now include classified ads, too. Keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama news in the Guardian newspaper every Tuesday. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Good morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. You are on the clock with Erin Green. As we run down uh, this week in the Bahamas, all your top news stories. If you want to call us, you can call us at 323-6232, 325-4316, or 325-4259. You can also text us at 422-4796. That's 422-4796. Kermit, there's a caller on the line. Uh, good morning, Carly. You're on the clock. Well, Carly, this is Doc. A few voice along with you, Aaron. Pretty high green. Good morning, Brayman. How you doing? I'm holding thank God. I have a question and a comment for 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 you and your guest. Okay. Now, which one you want first? Um, you hit me with the comment first. Okay. The comment is if this subject in which you are discussing uh -huh. were established in the home. Mm -hmm. we would have have a better society today. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, right, mm -hmm. I want to know what percentage of, of finance government pays to our, our private institution, schools, for that matter? Ah, okay, I'll have to find that out. What's the government, uh, I think, the, like, subvention? What's the government, um, yeah, 
just and, and do they do, do, do they am I harrow any Pacific subject or area for the amount in which the Bahamian people pay? I got a now is this public this private schools you're talking about, right? Right, private schools. Okay. I will find I can try to find that out for you, Brayman. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Ah oh, boy. I got a text here. Uh, it is a continuation. It says, if you don't have a problem discussing periods, why don't you tell a man around you when you are on your period on a daily basis if you aren't embarrassed and explain that? Is it okay then to ask a woman if she's on a period? I could be honest with you, text, if you're about to say something stupid or if you're about to enrage her, maybe you should ask first, eh? Maybe you should ask. I think that would be the best thing to do. Don't get yourself in more problems than you're already in. But secondly, it doesn't, it sort of doesn't work like that, right? It's not the thing that you announce. It, 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 it's not about, oh, we want to shout it from the mountaintops uh, because we're not embarrassed by it. No, that's not what it is. When I was in seventh or eighth grade, I was at one of them big assemblies in the auditorium. You know, the, the auditorium that took us 75 years to build at QC. And uh, I was on my cycle, and we had to stand up for a song. And when I stood up for the song, one of the older girls in the back tapped me on my shoulder and, you know, told me to sit down and then leaned over and said, you know, you had an accident. And, you know, I was really mortified. She could see it on my face. And she told me, don't panic, don't panic, sweet girl. Just get your sweater, wrap it around your waist so nobody could see and then go to the bathroom and clean yourself up and go to the nurse if you don't have anything to use, right? Um, up, you know, prior to that moment, I, I, I mean, I would have died. I would have died in the spot if somebody made fun of me. I would have melted away into nothing right there. It's, it's not about having to announce it. It's about creating an environment where people don't feel deathly afraid that they're going to be shamed because something very nat natural happened to them. In some other countries in the world, it is worse than that. In some other countries in the world, women kill themselves from the shame associated with being... In some parts of the world, the red tent, that principle, the red tent, where women have to leave the main domicile or the main home when they're on their cycle because they're quote-unquote unclean. Well, three years ago, a woman, I think, in Nepal or up in the mountains... She died from hypothermia because she was required by communal and cultural law to go sleep in the hut because she's on her cycle. She died because the hut was not prepared. It was not outfitted for that extreme burst of cold they had that night. Um, okay, sorry about that, guys. Got a weird alert on my phone just now. Uh, if anybody else got it, please text me and tell me what that was because um, I can't stop the show to figure it out. It was an alert. Yeah, yeah. Ah, Marco's alert. Everybody, check your phone. Check your phone. Check your phone. Put alert on it. All right. Another text here. Yes. A text that says, did you know that in Bible times, women would be removed from society when they're on this cycle? Do I support this idea? Okay, this one is tricky. Let me tell you why. If you're like going to remove me from society and put me in a hotel, and I'm going to have an attendant, and they're going to take care of me while I'm in this, in this place of, 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 you know, aggravation, and perhaps my body ain't feeling good, if you're going to remove me from society in that way, right, and create a sacred space for me to love myself, take care of myself and my sisters or my significant other, my partner, my husband, my boyfriend to come in and take care of me in this time, yes. Remove us from society at that time. But if you're talking about the stigma like, oh, you all are nasty and you shouldn't be here, you need to be in a separate place, no, that's dangerous. That's very, very dangerous, and we're not going down that road as a society. I have to, we have to find out what did the upper class people in society do. All right, another, oh, it's a Marcos alert test. This is a test. 
Okay, good. So it's working. Thank you very much. Oh, that's a fancy alert. That's a fancy, fancy alert. Well, there you go. Evidence that the people them are working. Okay, I got a couple more topics for us to touch on before we get to the end of the show. So I'm looking at the front of the, today's Guardian, and I see the headline, The Other Health Crisis. And the subheadline, forced to wait for care, non-COVID patients now overwhelming system. Well, listen, it's a good thing I wasn't driving with my one good eye this morning because uh, I probably would have lost a second good eye. What do you mean non-COVID patients are now overwhelming the system? What? I just think that the way that that is worded is so horrible. It does the Princess Margaret Hospital and PHA a disservice because it suggests that they don't understand what's happening. We are now overwhelming the system. The system that you all refuse to fix is now May 2022. We're almost at the end of May 2022. And it was March 2020 that we first experienced our, our first restriction in rights because of the pandemic. But it was later in that year that we saw the video from the then Attorney General in the Senate laughing about how they well prepared. They don't have nothing to worry about because they knew what was coming from long time. And you all still ain't fixed the hospital? And you still have the audacity to look up in people's face and tell them that non-COVID patients, you mean regular sick people, are overwhelming the system? You never fix the system. Stop pretending like you, you fixed it. That's the most disingenuous and disrespectful. You're going to play politics right into, the, right into the nomination line because when you're nominating, you ain't got no seat. I can't believe y'all would even suggest that. Nurses complain. The nurses got their strike certificate, you know which suggests that the people responsible believe them. But the nurses understand their duty of care and are not going to strike unless absolutely necessary, despite the fact that they say that they're working around rodents and mold in the hospital where people are supposed to go to get better. It is an insult and a disgrace for you all to suggest that anybody is overwhelming a system that you refuse to fix. Another headline, Minister advises public of sex offenders release. Another important one to read. On the bottom of the Chinese nationals arrested after 1.3 million worth of cocaine found on vessel. Now, technically, I threw that word nationals in there. Let me take that out. The headline itself reads, 21 Chinese arrested after 1.3 million worth of cocaine found on vessel. It's a lot of, wow, it's a lot of cocaine. It's a lot of people, too. The question that comes up for me is, do we also suspect human smuggling or trafficking? Were all of the people detained verified staff? We have concern for something else going on. There was an interesting story in today's Tribune. I ain't really gonna have time to get to it, but if somebody could explain to me this story, Bud Fight on Burns House Supply Loss, written by Neil Hartnell. I would really appreciate it. I got the impression after reading the story for the third time that perhaps you need to be on a Bud Light or slightly intoxicated to understand what went down here. Um, but we're going to get to that at another time. So, Texas, I'm... I'm getting to you right now. It says, good morning, Aaron and guests. Last person who texted, I feel that it may have been a man. And if it was, he has or had a mother and possibly a sister or daughter. They all have or will have menses. And by the way, it was by this route that you entered the world. I admonish you to educate yourself on female health education. It is very essential. And I, I, I want to stand up for that text he texted in. And he said, one thing I have to respect you for, Aaron, is your candidness. 
I appreciate it and like your show too, thanks for educating us all. Sometimes people play devil's advocate to put a point out there f so that we can all hear the counterpoint, you know? And that's why I entertain all my texters. There's no stupid question. Um, there's no stupid engagement. There's always an opportunity for growth or to learn. Another text, if so, how did you know when the woman was menstruating it would be up to her peer? Okay, sorry, texter, I don't understand that. Uh, I'm glad you said it, that they refused to fix the public health system. It'd been overwhelmed since I was an intern in 2014. My friend, 2014, let's talk time. But you're right. You're right. It, it, it's, it's a given. And so I see, you know, the expansion of doctor's hospital facilities in the Carmichael Road area. And, you know, when we're talking about an emergency, the, 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 the access is what you need. You know, when we're talking about emergencies, but I just want to say, let's make sure that as we're expanding medical services um, and access, it's, it's services that people could afford. Because just saying that it's available means nothing if you need three mortgages to pay it off. It means nothing. Okay. Great show as usual, Miss Green. Monkeypox going around. You see how that looked? Y'all, people don't give me that I don't want no raisins. Okay, the text, uh, yeah, the text was playing devil's advocate. I'm not going to cuss. You see me running hot, eh? Miss Green, it's a new day. You see it yet? Bye, grab. Look here. Wait, dear PLP. Dear PLP, we have to talk. We haven't talked in a long time. I want to frame my, my engagement in the most helpful way possible so that we won't be distracted by petty partisan politics. This one says, hospital can't be fixed, need new hospital. Many of the wards are in disarray. Equipment doesn't work. Lack of empathy and care and professionalism. Need new hospital and a new healthcare system. But brave them look the other way and put their head in the sand. Thanks, Aaron, for calling them out. All of them, and I can be honest with you, anybody who could afford to get on a plane they not really focus on local health care. Anybody who could afford to go and get health care somewhere else, they given up the ghost. You can't rely on them. You can only rely on the people that have to rely on that service. That's it. Okay, producer, let's go to the phones dead quick. Good morning. Good morning, call you on the clock. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning to all. How are you? You know, I'm all right. I'm saying, you're you trying to hit the nail on the head of these uh, private hospitals. You know, if, if, if doctors could do a private hospital, or oh, the head of the could do another private like a hospital, why can't the government do the same? Mm -hmm. you see, why can't we find enough government doctors to work in the government hospitals? You know, we, we have, in, in other words, we have too many uh, uh, doctors in this country who only concern about themselves. You know, we, we we should have a university hospital in this country already. You, Absolutely. You know? Thank you, caller. Yeah. And, you know. Thank you, caller. Give me a shout back on, look here, I'm not sure we'll be talking Tuesday, but Wednesday, definitely call me back. i sorry we lost you, caller. Oh, boy. Thank you very much. Ah, the time, the time. One more text, 2022, and yet a woman's menstrual cycle is still taboo to publicly talk about. And we make up over 50% of the population. You know what I'm saying? We make up over 50% of the population, and some people, not that text, he's just stoking me, but some people really don't want you to even talk about it. But it's so integral in... Uh, in, in youth issues, how do we ensure that young people could participate? Well, listen, in the, in the largest archipelago in the Western Hemisphere, I think that's what we are, where fisheries is one of the largest industries or income earners in the country, the idea that women cannot work because they cannot access feminine hygiene products generally or the specific style that they need is ridiculous 
And at the same time, we're inviting a global FTA, a cryptocurrency space into our country in an attempt to be the world leader in it. Makes no sense, people. Anyway, I had a thousand and seven things to talk about, including the Hubert Alexander Ingram papers. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to meet on CI Street and 1622 Avenue. And we're going to finish that conversation. You guys, stay tuned to Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. You've been on the clock with Aaron Green. And now it's time for Guardian Radio AM with Indira Fitzgerald. You guys have a great day.